Hi guys and thanks for watching again. Today I will be taking a look at this very tiny plasma ball and also taking a look inside of course. So, and I bought this device from eBay for about $7, $7.10 I believe. So it was very cheap but I like it a lot. It is, let me see if I can turn the lights down a little bit. There you have it. It's a very nice product for this $7. And compared to other plasma balls, I found these streamers, I believe it's called streamers, moving very, very violently. So I took my other plasma ball, which I already own for a couple of years. Let's turn it on. There you can see, see the difference. This one is all gently moving slowly. This one is like just like a kid. It's, it's all full of energy and moving all directions. Can't stop. And this one is what older and takes takes its time. So <laughs> that's a nice thing to see the difference. But of course they work exactly the same. Maybe I'll do a video on this one later on. But for now, yeah, they just work the same. They have two differences. This one also has a power uh, audio setting. So when I make a lot of noise, my talking is not enough apparently. It it just turns on and it's AC powered. This 12 volts AC goes in there and this one only 5 volts. Of course, I tried already to see if I can power one with the other. But as you can see, they don't particularly don't like each other. They make lots of noise when they don't know if you could hear that, but it sounds violently. So, and like like I said, when I turn this on, see if I can get some light in there, but I cannot. Also, don't know if you could hear that those bubbles. Um, I brew my own session IPA yesterday with Citra, Amarillo, and Magnum hops. And it's currently fermenting, and the bubbles you heard is the water lock. I don't know if it's called the water lock, but uh, on the top of the uh, fermentation bucket. And yeah, it's currently fermenting. The, the yeast is doing its work. So that's what you hear. Uh, let's turn this off and get it out of the way. So here is the tiny plasma ball. So let's see what current it draws. Get that in focus, please. 300, 320 milliamps. And it starts rising, of course, when I touch it. Because now I'm making ground reference. And it just uses a little more energy, 500 milliamps max, by the look of it. So yeah, it's modest amount of power it's nice so how this works there's a mixture of uh, noble gases inside probably a uh, helium uh, xenon a neon gas neon for sure the orange is probably neon and the bluish is probably caused by the xenon helium mixture and the streamers all start from the top of the inside of the, the glass tube and as you can see it's not very nice centered it's just bent a little bit to this side but then again it's a product of seven dollars so i'm not complaining um so yeah what, what happens is there is a transformer inside which generates a, a very high frequency probably 20 30 kilohertz and probably around 10 to 15 thousand volts and there's a wire coming from the transformer all the way to the top and there's probably some curly metal inside which just acts as an antenna. So the antenna just starts transmitting the energy and normally you, you cannot see it but this gas makes it visible in the form of this plasma. That's why it's called a plasma ball. So and that's why you can see that there's a 
plastic insulation you know, on the inside, that's to prevent the antenna from touching the side of the metal tube, because if that would happen, the streamers would go from the bottom of the plastic of the glass tube to the side to, to over here and it won't do very much for the rest of the ball so that's why it's a ripped plastic insulation over there so um, normally I don't know if you could hear it but my PC is over there it's turned off right now because I was playing with these plasma balls and my PC is all made of uh, acrylic plexiglass it's the case is entirely uh, clear so it does not have a very much protection from radio frequency or high frequency energy so I turn it off of course I left the plug in so it still got earth connection but it's turned off to prevent it uh, from getting damaged it will probably not get damaged but just to be sure and that's the reason why I also chose a power bank to power it because yeah putting this in my PC was probably a very bad idea because it we deal with tens of tens of thousands of volts over here so let's see if I can turn this off but before I do that let's turn on the lights I believe I saw some sort of oh, there it is you can see a water damage it looks like water damage it's on the inside of the globe i cannot remove it so that's that's nasty but then again a very cheap product I'm not complaining very much so far so let's get it open first of all i think i can remove Yes, I can remove the glass ball and there you can see the curly metal inside and inside the coating of the tube and that's why you don't see it. Although by wiggling it probably it, it got damaged a little bit. So, <coughs> But here's the antenna. Let's see if I can get a camera. That's probably good enough. So this wire just touches the metal inside there also the base is, is very ugly it's uh, don't particularly like it but then again Is it worth cutting off? Because no, probably not. There, there's not awful lot of. It's not even screwed in very well. There we go. No, now it's. Ah, that was probably reason. Now the plastic is all bent. <laughs> so mm, doesn't make much of a difference. No, well, it does a little. So. Yeah, it's it's a pretty much straightforward circuit. It's 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 simple, and this transformer, by the look of it, there goes the yeast again. <laughs> there, is, this transformer is probably made just for these these tiny plasma balls. And what it does, it generates a like I said, a very high voltage, very high frequency, low current voltage uh, output over there just to make it, it it light up in this gas ball filled with gas it's uh, of course it's it's first drawn vacuum and then filled with with noble gases and yeah it probably has a feedback winding a primary and a secondary winding and the secondary winding is this when the feedback winding it, it's when you turn it on it gets powered then uh, it turns probably on, turns on the tr uh, transistor which then again powers the primary winding until it gets saturated, collapses, and then this process starts all over again, which generates the high frequency. And 
it's just the, 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 the transformer which determines the fre frequency. And like I said, it's made for just for this purpose. So it's probably very well tuned just to get the best effect for the plasma ball. So yeah, it's, and this probably is only there for some smoothing. But uh, yeah, it's it's very, very simple, simple circuit. But I like it very much. I like it that you can such, get such a complicated product, which of course it exists for many, many years, because I believe it is invented by Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla. Uh, but yeah, they still exist today in, in the exact uh, uh, yeah, way he, he invented it. So that's, that's really great. So let's see if I can get this back in. So that's probably all there is to it, to this, this USB powered plasma ball. It's, it's a very, very nice product for, for so less um, little amount of money. I like it a lot. And remember, never put it in your computer. Never ever do that. And probably a, a, a normal USB power supply other than a power bank is probably also not a great idea because the high voltage can just spark back into these things and then yeah accidents can happen so that's about all there is thanks for watching